Hello and welcome to another Minecraft Bedrock Edition admin video. I'm here to talk about some software that I've written today that you guys can have that's all to do with maps. Yes, maps. Maps in the Minecraft Bedrock Edition of the game cause all sorts of problems. The world I'm on now is actually my VIP patron server and it has managed to grow its world size to a ridiculous amount. It is now 1.6 gigabytes in size, which means they're now encountering all sorts of problems in terms of lag and loading issues and occasional crashes as well. And the main reason for server issues is due to world size. The bigger the your world gets, the more laggy it becomes, the more the game struggles to load in the chunks and the more problems you end up having. So what causes world size issues? Well, number one thing is loaded chunks, which is why we prune our worlds. And I've got some software for that that I'm gonna be demonstrating in my next video. However, today's video, we're going to be talking about maps. How do maps affect the world size? Well, let me show you. If I open up this world in a program called MCC Toolchest and I look in this data category here, you'll see that there are a whole bunch of maps, maps data that is listed down that side. Each one of these is about 65 kilobytes in size, which is not very much, but there are absolutely hundreds of them. In fact, on this particular world, there are over 6,600 of them. And what happens is every time you make a map in the world, bear in mind these are not actual maps, but every time you use an empty map to turn it into a map and look at it, that then loads five maps worth of data into the database. Five maps, yeah, five maps, one for each zoom scale, it loads in automatically, even though you've only created one map. So what happens then? If we look back at MCC tool chest, you'll see in the database here, I've found the actual physical map that I put in an item frame here. You can see it's a map, it's got a little bit of data, and that data's fine, that doesn't do anything, and that doesn't actually store what's on the map. The game then takes this map, it gets this UUID or this unique identifier and it creates five versions of that map, one for each zoom scale. You see here we've got the scale 4, scale 3, scale 2, scale 1 and scale 0 and then it stores that data in the database for every single map. So what's your point? I like maps. Well, that means for every single map you are storing 330 kilobytes worth of world size just for one map, which means that you only need three maps to make one megabyte. And on a world like this, where there are over 6,600 entries for maps, that actually totals over 440 megabytes, which is a massive, massive, huge amount compared to the overall, overall world size, which is 1.6 gigabytes. So those maps are taking up an awful lot of space. The other thing to consider with this is that if you get rid of the maps by burning them, or perhaps they ended up in lava, or maybe they ended up trimmed when you trimmed the world and they're gone, it doesn't actually delete that data. So all of those five pieces of data for each map stays in the database, and there's no way in game to get rid of those files. So, I've created a couple of bits of software, one's a bit more drastic than the other one, that's, hello cow, <laughs> that's going to help get rid of a lot of that data. Let's look at those. Now, in my little folder where I keep my utilities, there are actually quite a few utilities here, but we're going to be focusing on these two today, Kill Maps and Lost Maps. Now, Kill Maps is a program that will destroy every single piece of map information and all of the actual maps themselves, whether they're in chests, in your inventory, in item frames, that is a worst case scenario, last ditch attempt at getting your world file size down is to run this app. The other one called Lost Maps will get rid of any of the data in here, this bit, which is taking up the space for maps that no longer actually physically exist. So what the Lost Maps does is it will go through your entire world database, it will find any maps that you've got either in your inventory or in item frames or in chests or wherever they're stored and then it will go through all of this map data here and it will work out which ones of these are no longer required, basically which ones of these are completely useless because the original maps don't exist anymore and then it will delete that data. So let's have a go at running this on this world. So the way this app works is we go into it like this and what you need to do is copy your world files into this world folder here. 
There is a way to run through it with command line where you can point it to another world, but for the sake of security, like we have in a backup, it's nice to keep it contained here. So let's go grab those world files, which are located here. I'm going to highlight those. I'm going to click copy and I'm going to move those into the lost maps world folder like that by pressing paste bearing in mind this is 1.6 gigabytes in size it might take a while depending on how fast your computer is then run the lost maps.exe first thing it's going to do is check that there is a world there and it's done that and it says yes that world exists and then it says are you sure you want to do this you've got three options yes which will do it and delete all of the data no which will abort it all or s for scan only we're going to do s first and what that's going to do, first of all, it's going to calculate how big the data is that it's got to deal with, which can take a little bit of time. And then it's going to actually go through the process, but without actually deleting anything. It's calculated that there are actually nearly 7 million keys to process. Now, in terms of your computer performance, this can take up quite a lot of memory as it runs. It can eat up quite a lot of your resources. So it's a good idea to run this without a great deal else going on, just to give it as much capacity as possible if you're on a low end PC or you don't have a lot of available resources. While this is running, I just want to prove to you that the world size we're working on is actually 1.6 gigabytes. This is how much world size it is currently before we started this operation. And then we'll see how big it is once this operation's finished. And you might be surprised. So it's finished passing now and it also went through a finding max process which was very quick just to sort through that data basically and it said there are 6,705 map entries found in that world which works out at roughly 1,339 actual maps as in that's the number divided by 5. Don't forget each map that you create creates 5 map entries. The total file size used by all of that map data is 440 megabytes, which is crazy. Now it's going through the system to work out which ones of those are actually lost that we can get rid of and which one of those we need to keep so that we don't have any problems with our maps. If we delete map data from an existing map and then load that map in the world, as in we go to a chunk that that map exists in, the game will crash. So we need to make sure we're not removing any data from maps that still exist. And now the process is finished and it says there actually are 3,685 pieces of data that are lost so we can get rid of those. And the total file size that will be freed up from getting rid of that is 242 megabytes. So it's not as much as the overall amount, but doing that means that we're not going to lose any of the maps that's in the world, but we are going to save a significant amount of data. So now what I need to do is actually run that again, but press yes instead of scan this time to do the job. I wish I'd done that in the first place. While I'm waiting for the actual process to go through and do what it needs to do, you can see that each time we run this, we get a log file as well, which if we open this, it will show us actually what map data that it's found and it will give us all the details we got on that screen as well. It also tells us how long it took and that process took 6.2 minutes to complete, which is not ever so quick, but you know, considering it's saving you so much file size for your world, it's, it's not bad. Okay, that has now finished and what I want to do is actually check that world by playing on it. So if I go into the world folder, these are the files that have now been sorted out with all of that lost map data removed. I'm going to right click and go to copy or you can do control C on your keyboard and then I'm going to hop over to where this world is stored. Then I'm going to delete everything in there and I'm going to paste in our new world files by right clicking and hitting paste or control V on your keyboard and then I'm going to go into that world and play on it. But before I do that, let's just check the world file size now. Let's see if it's come down at all. Oh dear, it's actually gone up by nearly 200 megabytes. That's the opposite of what we wanted. Fear not, my friends. This is how this system works. It doesn't make sense, but the more you fiddle with your world database, the more the size increases, even if you're reducing the data that's in there until you actually play in your world and then it will start optimizing itself and then the file size will start coming down as you play in your world. So let's check that out. Let's go into that world and first thing we want to do is make sure it doesn't crash, which it didn't. 
And then you can see the maps that I had before are still here. The maps have not gone anywhere. The world hasn't crashed, so we haven't deleted the wrong data. And now what I'm going to do is just fly around. I'm just going to fly around the chunks. And as I fly around and look at this world in all of its glory, the systems are taking place which are reorganizing your world database and getting rid of anything that it doesn't need, optimizing it, and then it puts it all back together again. Before we do that, we're actually gonna go on to the next process, which is the more severe kill maps software that I made, which is your last ditch attempt when you really, really need the file size down and you don't care about your maps anymore, and it will just destroy all of the maps in the world and all of the data. Let's check that out. But before we check that out, actually, let's just see if that world file size changed at all, having been in the world. We, it did. It's now come down to 1.65 gigabytes, which is still slightly more than it was originally. But if we keep playing, it's going to come down more. So the other piece of software looking at today is called Kill Maps. And this does exactly the same thing, but worse. Coming back to our handy MCC Toolchecks program, basically what we're going to be doing this time is exactly the same thing again. We're going to be going through the entire world database and we're going to find every single map that's in every single chest or shulker box or barrel or player inventory or ender chest or just on the floor or in an item frame. We're going to wipe it from the game and we're going to come into this data area here and we're going to wipe out all of the map data from there and drastically reduce the world file size. And the way we do that is exactly the same as what we did before. We need to grab our world data, which effectively we've already changed a little bit, but it doesn't matter, it's fine. And in our kill maps folder, we're going to open the world folder and we're going to paste all of those world files in there. Now what we're going to do is run kill maps and exactly the same thing comes up. It's checked the world exists, which it does. And now it says, what do you want to do? Yes, no, or scan. This time I'm just going to go for it. I'm not going to bother scanning first. I'm just going to do the process. It's going to go through the exact same thing the other one did. But this time, instead of looking for ones it's going to keep, it's just going to get rid of the lot. Bear in mind with this particular piece of software, our RAM, our memory can go up quite high. It's actually getting towards the end of the process now, but it did just peak at six gigabytes worth of system memory or RAM being used. It's doing a lot more processing of the database this time because it's got to read and write a lot of information. So it's quicker, believe it or not. It took only 3.9 minutes to finish, but it has managed to delete all of the 737 remaining actual physical maps, that's the map items, and it's got rid of 3,025 bits of map data that was left over from after we did the lost map software before. So that's all finished. We can close that now. And then we go back into that world folder. We're going to right click and do copy again. And then we're going to go back into our world folder, delete all of those, and we're going to paste those back in again. And now if we load Minecraft up again and go back into that world, we will hopefully see that those maps that I put down just over here are completely gone. The item frames are still there, but there are no more maps. The maps have been vanished and our world file size has been saved. Let's see how much file size we saved. Let's check it out. Oh dear. We're now up to 1.94 gigabytes of world file size. Rather than it coming down, we've actually, we, from our original, we've gone up 340 megabytes with, oh dear. But fear not, as I said, playing in the actual world will drastically reduce that file size over time. The more you explore and the more things you do, the more that file size is going to come down. Obviously, if you're exploring new chunks and new areas of the world, then that file size is going to increase because every new chunk that you explore, the world size will increase. And that's going to take me on to my other bit of software, which is the pruning software that I've created. But I'm going to talk about that in a separate video. And just so we can prove that world file size will come down slightly, I was in that world about 30 seconds and it has already come down to 1.68 gigabytes. So yeah, just a little bit of time in there and it's already coming down drastically. So there we go. That's pretty much everything I wanted to look at. I was going to talk about this other one called Rebuild Database, which goes through your entire world, copying the entire database into a new one with the hopes that it will be reduced in size. However, I've had hit and miss results with it. 
One time I got the world database size down from 1.6 gigabytes to 1.2 gigabytes just by running this. And the next time it did it, it went up to 1.9 gigabytes. So I don't know, it's a bit hit and miss. I'm not 100% sure. I've only just started writing this one. So I'm not gonna put that one down for download at the minute, but these two, are essential tools for anybody running as an SMP, a large scale multiplayer server. The lost maps in particular, I think should be run every time you do any admin or your pruning or anything like that. And the kill maps, if you really do have a drastically oversized file size and you don't care about all of the maps in your world being deleted, then there we go. That's gonna bring down your world file size. Anyway, that is gonna be it from me. I hope you enjoyed this little admin video. And if you're interested in playing on my patron world probably not this one due to how big the world size is now i am actually starting up another two vip servers for my patrons which you can access by being a patron of foxy hotel you do have to be over 18 to join but yeah we've got a lot of members now so we're keeping this one alive but we're also starting another two servers that you can choose any of them to play in so yeah, I'm going to be doing many, many admins in the future, which is why I need all of these useful scripts and utilities to make my job a lot easier and hopefully make your job easier too. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. I'll lock it right in. Bye.